spider silk with the scent of a female. He just needs to follow it. Wherever it leads him. Other males have gone on the same quest and have come to a grisly end. Here's the female, and she doesn't look very amorous. In fact, she kills every male who doesn't match up to her expectations. What can he do to win her over? Dance. Dance for his life. He will need a show-stopping trick to avoid becoming lunch. With his fan unfurled, he begins an ever more complicated series of dance moves to try and seduce her. At last, she succumbs to his advances and allows him to mate with her. He matched her expectations. But she kills him anyway. The Namib Desert, one of the most exposed places on Earth. As the sun climbs high, everybody takes cover from the extreme heat. Everybody except the hot rod ant. As others take refuge, their day is just beginning. Cleaning out the nest. The sand can reach a scorching 70 centigrade. The ant's long legs raise their bodies above the surface where it's 10 degrees cooler. But if they stand still, 
they will fry. They must keep moving or risk the same fate as their quarry, the creatures that have collapsed from heat stroke. Too deeply buried, but a good place to cool off. Foraging decisions must be fast. Too big. Perfect. Back to the nest before they also die. But they've strayed into a minefield. Each of these strange cone-shaped pits is a death trap. With a brutal predator at its center. Here lie antlion larvae, tiny ambush predators with venom-filled pincers. Some ants manage to escape, but the antlion has other tricks. Flinging sand into the air, it creates an avalanche. In this cone of death, the walls are so angled that the sand slips beneath the ants' feet. As boulders rain from the sky, escape seems almost impossible. Australia has the highest tides in the tropics, which expose vast areas of shoreline. And here lives a truly extraordinary species of octopus. Octopuses are marine animals. They live and breathe underwater. At low tide, most octopuses will be imprisoned in their rocky pools. But this is no ordinary octopus. It's the only one specially adapted to walk on land. It pulls itself along using the hundreds of tiny suckers that line its arms. Hunting for crabs, it walks from pool to pool. apart from a rather startled fish. This one is empty. So the octopus moves on.
a rock pool may seem like a safe refuge. But the octopus's suckers enable it to move just as stealthily in water as out of it. Nowhere is safe when this octopus is around. In Papua New Guinea, the bower bird has lovingly rebuilt and redecorated his bower. Another visitor. This time, it's a female. This is just where he wants her. Time to begin the show. First, he expands his pupils alternately. It's an oddly mesmerizing display. A spot of limbering up, accompanied by a weird and wheezy call from deep in his throat. It's time for his grand performance. He waves his wing like a matador's cape. to be transfixed. This is certainly eye-catching, but it seems he needs to do more. Generously, she drops him a hint. It's the bird equivalent of a bouquet of flowers. It's all going so well, it's time to get physical with a few headbutts to her chest. One final flourish to cap weeks of effort. But something's wrong. His rival is back, and at the worst possible moment. What should he do? For the female, the moment has gone. 
Sometimes, whatever you do, things just don't work out. While our brains get swamped with information about patterns and color, through Callie's eyes, fast movement trumps everything. As she stalks the flies, her eyes send signals to the brain's visual cortex, which analyzes what's changed between one picture and the next up to 70 times every second, faster than the human brain. And a far bigger proportion of the neurons in Callie's brain are dedicated purely to the detection of movement. She almost can't help but pounce. Cat's wild ancestors relied on low light vision and the ability to detect movement to stalk prey. But these evolutionary adaptations have a downside. Cats can't focus on anything closer than around 30 centimeters in front of them. But where their eyes fail them, cats have another perfectly adapted sense to go in for the kill. The team has set up an experiment to reveal just how our cat's secret weapon works. So the camera can do in full HD resolution up to 2,700 frames per second. I was thought 20, 30 times will get it. Well, we'll set the camera to 1,000. John Bradshaw is hoping these ultra high speed cameras will capture this extraordinary sensory organ in action. It really is very, very quick. I've seen still photographs of it happening, but there's nothing like actually seeing the whole motion. So I think we got it there, but it is very, very, very quick. John's trying to observe the cat's whiskers as they move forward into the attack position. Let's just take the toy away for a second. And let's, can we have a look at what we've just taken? Okay, so here we go. The cat realizes the mouse is within his grasp, but he wants to know exactly where it is in relation to his mouth. Its eyes give up because they can't focus very close. That's where the whiskers take over. So what we can see here is the whiskers suddenly being swept forward. And now the claws are coming into action. So what we've got here, look, the whiskers are pointing almost directly in front of the cat's nose. In fact, he's catching them with his claws as he sweeps around trying to catch the mouse. But the little muscles at the base of each whisker are really tugging hard to swing those forward, completely out of the normal position. This is really extraordinarily detailed. I'd never expected to see all of this. It all seems to take place in about a fifth of a second, which just shows how fast cat's reflexes really are, from the point where they sweep the whiskers forward where the muscles contract and then relax back and the whiskers spring back again. The mouse doesn't have a chance. Far thicker and longer than normal hairs, Whiskers also sit three times deeper in the skin, where they attach to nerve endings, telling the cat how far each one is being bent back and how quickly. Their whiskers are the same width as their body, allowing cats to navigate the narrowest spaces. Cats also have whiskers above their eyes and on their ankles, sending them a constant stream of information as they sense the world around them. There will be no easy meals on this island. Walruses are the largest seals in the world. They weigh over a ton and are armed with tusks a metre long. Exhausted from his swim, the bear must regain his strength. The next day, a sea fog shrouds the island. The Wallaces sense that they're in danger. Using the fog as cover, the bear approaches the herd. The adults close ranks around their young, 
presenting a wall of blubber and hide. He tests the barrier, but it stands firm. It appears that the world's largest land carnivore has met his match. There must be a chink in the armor somewhere. Not here. This female walrus is shielding her pup if he can just prize her off. The bear's claws and teeth can't penetrate her thick hide. With the herd retreating to water, the bear must move quickly. Having failed with one, he heads straight for another. The chance of his first meal in months is slipping away. seems increasingly desperate. It's now or never. He must avoid the stabbing tusks if he's to win. The flailing walrus is immensely powerful and drags the bear away from the shallows towards the safety of the herd. Slips from his grasp. At this time of year, polar bears on average succeed only once in 20 hunts. If the hunter is skinny like this one, that may not be often enough. All she can do is keep trying. To prevent her scent betraying her, she makes a wide sweep to get downwind of the seal. Getting close. She's now right behind the seal.
Incredibly, she caught the seal underwater. It's only small, but even so, its blubber alone will contain 100,000 calories, enough to sustain this bear for a week. And in that time, she might even catch another. But this can't go on forever. As summer continues, temperatures are rising. Each hunt requires more energy, draining the bears of their reserves. Wolves. These in northern Canada are the largest and most powerful in the world, and they're setting out to hunt. The pack is 25 strong, a sign that the prey they're seeking is formidable. These bison are even bigger than their southern cousins and the largest land animals in North America. For generations, wolves and bison here have been shaped by their battles with each other, making each the most impressive of its kind. The bison will not stay long among the trees. They're not safe here. The wolves are closing in, but their chance of ambushing the bison in the woods has passed. Their prey are now in the open and grouped together for safety. The wolves will need to work as a team if they're to make a kill. They circle the herd, trying to unsettle it and split it up. But the bison are armed and dangerous. They will be safe as long as they stick together. The wolves up their game, harrying the herd, a ploy to trigger a stampede and spit away one of the smaller ones. The bison form a defensive circle around their young, horns pointing outwards. The wolves need a bison to break rank. But the tables are turning, and now the wolves have to retreat. The pack focus their attention on the rear of the herd, and the bison begin to panic. Bison falls behind. Even this yearling dwarfs the wolves. Running head down, the herd's only thought is escape. A stroke of luck for the wolves. The kill will feed the pack for several days, but then they will have to resume the chase. At the frozen ends of our planet, the struggle for survival never eases. It's called Darwin's bark spider, and the female has a remarkable strategy.
Like a real-life spider woman, she sprays strands of silk in one long, continuous flow. The threads fan out like a sail and drift on air currents blowing across the water. Every few seconds, she crimps the strands together to stop them spreading too widely. The breeze will do the rest, blowing the threads into a single line and a 25-metre bridge. Now she must reinforce her bridge because her web will hang from it. But there's something bouncing the line at the other end. Another Darwin spider is trying to take advantage of her hard work. She must deal with the intruder head on. The cut line is an inconvenience, but no more than that. With hooks on the tips of each leg, she gathers in the thread. It won't go to waste, as she'll eat it later. When it's all reeled in, she sprays again. Out streams another 25-metre bridging line. How a spider no bigger than a thumbnail can produce so much silk so quickly has baffled scientists. And it's no ordinary silk. It's the toughest natural fibre on the planet, tougher than steel. And it needs to be tough to span the wide river. With the bridge taut and the ground anchor in place, it's time to construct her trap. These spiders can build the world's largest orb webs, up to two meters wide. A few hours from the first spray of bridging line, the job is done. Now her strategy is simple. Sit and wait. And there's one final bout of silk production. Shrink wrapping her food for later. It's early morning. And Tigger spots a strange black cat on a nearby roof. And listen to this. Chittering may simply be a sound of frustration, but no one's really sure. Rocky out for a stroll in the afternoon. Hello. Makes this noise when another cat blocks his way. But the story of cat communication is a lot more surprising than this. There's one noise we've hardly heard. It rarely happens when the cats are out with each other. Hello. To understand what's going on, we have to go back to the beginning and the youngest members of the study. Biologist Dr. John Bradshaw can explain why these one-week-old kittens meow. 
The meow starts off as a kitten vocalisation. It's something that kittens use in order to call their mothers over, and, and as you can see, it's very effective in doing that. The mother is very attentive to those meows. And then as the kitten grows up, it gradually stops meowing, presumably just because the meow stops working. The mother wants to wean the kitten and stops responding. With a pet cat, which is constantly meowing at its owner, it's a way of getting the owner's attention. And that's because we uh, are not very vigilant creatures. We spend a lot of our time with our noses buried in books or computer screens or TVs. And the cat, each cat learns independently, we think, that using this piece of kitten behavior is a good way of getting our attention. So meowing is a good way of getting us to look up and find out what it is they want from us. There you go, Henry. Can I say hello to Mum? So cats have two different languages, one for each other oh. and one for us. Scientists have found cats make a huge range of meows. And they wondered if there was a universal cat-human language. There's a trill that Jasper does, isn't there, which is quite what? odd. Yeah, that's it. They make that funny little noise, they go... <coughs> Scientists have discovered that every cat's meows are unique. Each cat learns which noises work best in certain situations, developing a special language that only their owner will understand. When they want food, it's a much more prolonged meow. Hungry. <laughs> Miss Piggy's learned how to say milk, so she does a proper milk meow. She's like, milk! Like that. Yeah, come on, is it nice? And when our cats meow, there's one thing that almost every owner in the study said they did. Did you go hunting today? Hmm? Talk back. Pretty girl. You a pretty girl? You a mama's pretty girl? Pixie, you lovely girl. Yeah. Talking comes naturally to us. And every kitten that spends time with people learns that to communicate with us, they have to make a noise.